Now, don't you know that shook them boys a little bit? When the very purpose of their coming was, you're John the Baptist. You're the one that started all this. And it used to be everybody coming to you, and now he's getting everybody, and nobody's talking about you. And they probably thought he was going to he was going to rise up and defend himself. They probably thought that he was going to rise up and begin to say, "Yeah, they're wrong, and it's not them, and we need to try to convince." No, no, no. You know what he said? He said, "No, he must increase." And here's how we're going to do it, boys. I I must decrease. I must decrease. Now listen, John wanted less and less people talking about him. And more and more people talking about Jesus. He said, if he's going to be magnified the way he should, then I need less people talking about John the Baptist. Now listen to me, young people. It's going to be very simple thoughts now. One of the best ways to magnify the Lord in our lives is for us to decrease. I have to get good at getting small. If I want Jesus to be magnified in my life, I have to get good at getting small. That's not easy because flesh don't want that. Brother Matt, would you come up here and help me for just a minute, brother? Come stand up on the baptistry with me. Let me show you two things tonight, all right? Two things in this idea of he must increase, I must decrease. If I had a title, I guess it would be magnify the Savior by decreasing self. I'm going to give you, first of all, a visual illustration and then a practical application. All the way up, if you don't care, brother. Back on up to the wall. Brother Steve, kid, will you come up here and help me in just a minute? You just come over here and have a seat, and then I'll get you to get in my spot. Now, here's the thing. If I want to magnify the Lord, I'm going to let Brother Matt be the Lord tonight. I don't want to hear no snickers. All right, okay, because none of us are the Lord. Brother Matt's going to represent the Lord, and he's the Lord in my life. He's a part of my life. Here's the thing. If if the Lord's right here and I'm right here, then first of all, you're not seeing him very much. He's not not being magnified in my life right now. I am. You see him a little bit. This crowd can see him a little bit better and they can see him a little bit better. Maybe they can see it, but but everybody's not seeing it. And really, but here's the thing. If I want to magnify the Lord, now I can't make Brother Matt bigger physically. I mean, I could feed him a bunch, I guess, but that'd take a while. But you know, I can magnify him without his size ever changing. I can magnify him by me decreasing. Let me show you. If I'm here and, 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 I, just, and I just go down a little. Already he's bigger than he was. If I just go down a little, he's bigger than he was. I could go, I could go further down. It just looks like he's getting bigger and bigger, don't it? I just get all the way down. Now you don't hardly see me at all. John said, he must increase. And in order for him to do it, I've got to get small. I must decrease. Let me tell you what happens. Brother Steve, will you come and just sort of do what I just did while I talk him through it? Two things happen when I decrease. First, just get in front of him there and just kind of hunker down a little. Put your hands on your knees. Two things happen as we get smaller. Number one, listen, he becomes, the Lord becomes more visible. Go down to your knees like you're praying. Right there, stay up, not all the way down, just on your knees. The smaller he gets, the more visible the Lord gets. Does everybody see that? John said, stay right there, are you okay, Steve? The Lord, John said, it ain't about me, boys, it's about Jesus. And he said, the best thing we can do is quit talking about me now. The very purpose of my coming was him when he got here. And now he's here. And so I need everybody to quit seeing me now. And so I got to get smaller. Now look at this. The smaller I get, the more visible he is. And young people, in your life, the more you can get over yourself and make things not about you, the more people can begin to see Jesus which is what they want to do when these young people sing these verses. I, I told them boys, and at last night I said, listen boys, and daily, I said, y'all need to make sure that this singing right here is about making much of Jesus and not about that you're getting to sing the verse. Because they don't need to see us. They need to see more of Him. 
So he becomes more and more visible. Brother Steve, go to both knees and put your hands down on the floor. There you go, just like that. He becomes more and more visible. But you know what else happens? The second thing happens in this decrease, boys. I become more vulnerable. Stand all the way up, Steve, if you would. So right now, it's almost like now, you won't think this, but me and the Lord kind of on equal ground when I'm, when I'm standing up and it's all about me. And I'm going to tell you something. When you're full of yourself, it's hard for the Lord to do anything with you. When you're full of yourself, it's hard for Him to do anything with you. But when I start getting small, go down just slowly each step like you did, Brother Steve. Each step, go down to your knees. Every step of the way, go ahead down to a knee. Every step of the way, now stop right there. Brother Steve gets more and more vulnerable. If Brother Matt chose to now, he could manipulate Steve. He could, he could move Steve. If Steve was willing to lay all the way flat like I did, you know what he is now? Listen, completely at the mercy of the Lord. Anything the Lord wanted to do to him right now, he could do, and there'd be nothing Steve could do about it. Completely vulnerable. You know why? Because I just got little. I just got small, and he got bigger and bigger. He became more visible, and I became more vulnerable. And I don't mean vulnerable in a dangerous way, because listen, because you can trust his mercy. Yeah. You're completely at his mercy. But you know what David said? David said, I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. You say, I, I, don't, I don't like being vulnerable. Hey, if I was telling you you were at the feet of man, then you could be afraid. Hey, but you're at the feet of a most gracious Lord who wants good for you. And you can trust his mercies. And I must decrease. You guys can come on up down. Thank you. A visual illustration of if I get small, he becomes bigger without him ever changing size. It's just I'm getting out of the way and people can see him and I'm humbling myself before him so he can work in me. And people can see that, the visual illustration. Stay with me now. Let me show you a practical application. You say, well, how do I do it? How do I decrease? How do I get small? Very quickly, first of all, you bow regularly. You bow regularly. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people which are called by my name shall, anybody know, humble themselves and, notice them two coming together, humble themselves and pray. That's that getting down on my knees before him. That's saying to God, listen, every time I humbly bow, and by the way, it's all about him getting magnified. You know what the end of that verse says? It says, if we'll seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, then will I, the Lord, hear from heaven, and then will I, the Lord, heal their land. You know what he said? He said, man, when them people will regularly bow themselves and they'll get small, I'll get big. And when they get small, I'll do some things that only I can do. And when he heals the land, he gets the glory. So how do I get small? I bow regularly. Every time I bow, I'm saying to God, I am too weak to do this. I have to have you. Every time I bow, Brother Andrew, I'm saying, Lord, I cannot do this. You know what that is? That's decrease. Every time you bow, you decrease. And every time I decrease, he increases. How do I get small, preacher? I bow regularly. Secondly, I bless selflessly. I make my life about others. I bless selflessly. I bow regularly to say to God, I have to have your help. I am not strong. I am not smart. I do not have this figured out. And without you, I can do nothing. And then secondly, as I go around in my life, and my life is not about me, it's about blessing others. Look at me, boys. God's never going to be magnified in your life when you are the person you're most concerned about. How I look and how people think about me and am I this and am, listen, you've got to get past it if you want to magnify the Lord. Ladies, it has to be about God and others. When you begin to bless selflessly, Brother Gibbs talked last night about loving those who are hard to love. Some of y'all are real good at loving the ones that love you. You're very good at being a good friend to your few good friends. But the Lord says, you know, love everybody. 
and you want to make much of Jesus, you want to magnify the Lord, you get small, and here's how you get small. You, you bow regularly, and you bless selflessly. Let me give you a verse on that one. Don't turn to it. You can write the reference down if you'd like to. Well, actually, I don't have the reference. He said, he said he, Paul told Timothy, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. So there's your pride. He said, Timothy, you charge them now. Some of them that have got things going in their life, they're, they're wealthy, they're successful. He said, you charge them that they be not high-minded. Listen, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. And here's what he said. Listen, he said, charge them to do good. And he says, they that, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. That communicate there is talking about giving. So here's what Paul, Paul said to Timothy. He said, Timothy, them people in your church, there, them people around you that God has blessed and they've done real well, he said, they're going to be tempted. Look at me, girls. They're going to be tempted to get high-minded. They're going to think they're something. And Paul said, the best way for them to be small is to be ready to distribute, be ready to give, to be all about others. Come on, some of you young girls got to get better at others. It's always about me and they hurt my feelings. And I can't believe they did that to me or didn't do that for me. Or, listen, somewhere along the way, it's got to become, I'm nothing, Jesus, I need you, bow regularly and help me be a blessing to others. But then there's a third way. Say, how do I get small? How do I go down like that so God rises up and God can control me and have me at his feet and still be seen by everybody else? You bow regularly, you bless selflessly and turn to Matthew chapter 5. We've got 18, 8 minutes and I might not even use all that. Matthew chapter 5, once you turn there, the third one is this. You have to burn publicly. You burn publicly. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Are you still awake? Say Amen. Burn publicly. Because see, the thing that's got to get smaller is the flesh. That's what's got to get decreased. It's me. It's the flesh. John the Baptist. They said, John, 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 Rabbi, you're the man. I mean, you're the master. You're the one. And they're going to this other guy. And he said, no, no, no. John must decrease. He was talking about the flesh. He was talking about himself he was saying, it can't be about me anymore. It is about him. And then he says, and I told y'all that. I told y'all that I was not him. I was coming before him, and it's all about him. And John was saying, this flesh has got to go down. So how do you do that? Well, you bow regularly, saying to God, I'm weak. I must have you. You bless selflessly. That You look for others and their needs, and you try to be a blessing. And then thirdly, you burn publicly. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And look at the end. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Notice uh, very quickly, I'll give you some outline on this. Notice the result. The end of this is what we want. Magnify the Lord. The end of it is that they would glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so the Lord says, I'm going to tell you how you can do some things that will magnify me. That will make people glorify the Father. And here's what he says. Notice the result. Then notice the reference. Let your light so shine. Let your light so. You say, what does the word so mean right there? He means let your light, let your light shine like this. You mean, well, like what? It's a reference to the previous verse. Look at verse 15. Neither do men light a what? And put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Some of you thought I just lost my mind or, or was thinking the power was going to go out. When the Lord says in verse 16, let your light so shine, he's not talking about shining like that or shining like a flashlight or shining like a spotlight because they didn't have those. And he had done referenced in the previous verse to give them an idea. He said, let your light so shine. Notice the reference. Hey, then notice this. Notice the responsibility. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Now, the location of that responsibility. The location of that responsibility is let your light so shine before men. Here's where it's at. Listen to me, boys. We're talking about decreasing. You know how you decrease? You burn publicly. Me and Brother Matt were talking about it today. It's hard, ain't it, Brother Matt? The flesh is flesh. No matter how long you've been saved, no matter how long you're trying to live for God, that flesh still gets embarrassed. I hate it. I hate that I still struggle to I, I told Brother Matt, the craziest thing is you could march me into a, a, a prison with a thousand of the toughest inmates and say we're going to give you a pulpit and the Bible and you can preach. And, and I, I get nervous about preaching because it's eternal, but I'm not scared to preach. Oh, no. 
but then you just put me on the street and give me one individual and all of a sudden my flesh, and I'm supposed to give them a track and tell them about Jesus and all, all kind of thoughts come. Well, they're probably already saved. Well, maybe they're busy. Well, I mean, you know, they probably, are, they probably don't want you to bother them. They're on their lunch break. All these, isn't that something, you know what that is? That's flesh. But the Lord said this. He said, if you want to decrease, you take that flesh. Look at me, boys. He said, you take that flesh and you take it before men. Not in church, not at camp. Before men. You that go to the public school, he's talking about right there. You that got jobs, he's talking about right there. Those of you that might not have those things, he's talking about when your church goes out and visits and you're going door to door or you're on the street. He's talking about right there. Before men. Hey, adults, you know when he wants to get glory out of your life? Before men. This is not just for teens to magnify God. You were created for his pleasure. We need to decrease so he can increase. These young people need to see more Jesus in us adults. He said, I'll tell you how to do it. You burn publicly. The location of that responsibility is before men. Then there was the clarification of that responsibility. Well, what's, what does he mean, shine? I don't, I don't know how to shine. What do I mean, shine? Oh, he tells you. He says, look at me, girls. He says, you go do good works before men. You go out there and do stuff like what we do together and we ain't afraid to do it in front of each other. You know, like when we sing, at camp we sing, we stand on what is timeless, we stand on what's true, and we hold that Bible up. Man, it ain't a problem, is it? We all hold them up in front of everybody. We all love it. But it's like this. It's like next Monday or, or when school starts back, you pick that same Bible up and you carry it in that public school where everybody can see it. Let me tell you what that is. That's good works before men. You say, I don't know if I can do that. All right, you know what that is? That's our flesh. By the way, adults, you can take yours to work. Well, they won't allow it. Uh, have you tested that? Or are you just assuming that? I remember when I first started coaching Little League adults around here, you know, I, I didn't think you could do anything. And Mike Blanton coached Cooper when he was very young and took the boys in the outfield and knelt down and started praying right before the game. And I was like, what in the world? I was looking around to see if we was going to get arrested. I asked him later, I said, can we do that? He said, I've just decided I'm going to do it till they stop me. He said, and in all these years, I've only had one family ever say anything. We took care of them. We never had no more problem. And so I started coaching after that. You know what I said? We're going to do it till they stop us. But I tell you this, flesh is flesh. And here's what we do. We just assume they don't want us to do it so we don't want to ruffle nobody's feathers. No, that ain't really why you ain't doing it. We're really not doing it, mom and dad, and all of us adults, because we have flesh and we get afraid. And I'm going to tell you something. You want to let God be magnified? You burn publicly. You start doing good work. Hey, pray for your food and do it a little slower. Not like this. Not as soon as the plate's down and by the time you've picked the fork up and stabbed it and got it to your mouth, you've already prayed and amen. Come on, adults. Well, Lord, thank you for the food. And nobody in the place, nobody in the place knew you prayed. Well, I ain't doing, I ain't doing it before them. Well, then you ain't doing this verse, Mr. Pharisee. Because he said, do it before men that they may see your good works. You know why? Then they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven. Coming home from Montana the other day, I wore a t-shirt from Brother Tim's youth meet. And it looks kind of like a Star Wars shirt, but it says Jesus Christ. Real big old letters. And I wore it and I took my jacket off at the airport so I made sure that was showing. I actually fell asleep laying there like, yeah, praise God. Some fella come off the plane. You know what he said? I like that shirt. I was like, that's right, you like it, boy. <laughs> Say, what is that? Let's just do it before men. Don't just wear your Christian shirt when you're going with the Christian group. Some of you that go to the Christian school, but you have to take that driver's ed over there. Why don't you just go ahead and dress at driver's ed like you dress at the Christian school? Whoa. You know why? Because our flesh gets embarrassed. But you know what? We're talking about getting flesh down. So you know how you do it? You go in public and do things for Jesus and let people see you and your flesh just goes. But you know what you're doing? You're just, you're just decreasing and the Lord is rising up in your life. Somebody will say, why, why you like that? And you'll say, because I'm a Christian. 
I'm like that because I'm a Christian. Notice the reality. The reality is this, that since we've been here, that candle's been burning, and it's smaller than it was when we started. And that's what we're talking about. I must decrease. You do things in public like carry that Bible when everybody sees you. You do things in public like pray over your meals and let them see you. You do things in public like every now and then be the talker on soul winning, new man. Don't always let it be the same 12 that do the talking and you're just the silent partner. I thank God that you go. But somewhere along the way, if you want the Lord to be magnified, you got to tell your flesh, you're not in charge, He's in charge. And I'm going to put you down by doing a good work before men. I'm going to do it in front of somebody that's not a Christian. Brother Burton Gates convicted my brains out when he was preaching our mission conference. And I'm still not to the level he is. When his plane lands, this is what he told us, and I believe he does it. Every time he's on a plane, Brother Paul going to come to the piano, and when the plane lands and then everybody rolls in and then there's that little ding and that tells everybody they can stand up when you finally get to your gate. Brother Burton said he told the Lord sometime back, every time that little ding happens and we all stand, he said, I'm going to stand and begin to tell them that the Lord's been good to me. So he stands every time when everybody's scrambling to get their stuff and he just starts testifying about how good God has been. And he started challenging us at the mission conference about telling people what Jesus has done in your life. And so the Lord has provoked me, and I used to just give out tracts, and I might just witness a little bit. But now the Lord is having me say this, because it was 22 years ago Jesus changed my whole life. Right after that mission conference, we went to the theater and watched a Christian movie. It's called The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. If y'all haven't seen that, it's, it's a blessing. And it was right after mission conference, and I, I know the kids was torn to pieces because I was amen and in it. In the theater. Somebody's like, I don't go to the theater. Well, don't go. When it comes out on DVD, you can go watch it. You can say amen in your house. I was sitting there, amen, and it was just, I mean, the guy gets saved at the end, and I was fired up when he was getting saved. We'd just come out of mission conference, and Burton had me crank slam up. And when it ended, everybody kind of clapped, and Carson and Brianna was there, and they stood up to leave, and they saw me stand up, and they sat back down. You said, what did you do? I turned around and said, 22 years ago, Jesus changed my whole life. Wasn't that a blessing? And they were all like. <laughs> and listen, it was probably Christians. But they was like, what in the world? I still wasn't done. I started getting my stuff out. I said, man, that was about like having church, wasn't it? The person was like, yeah. They didn't know what to say. And so I've started saying that on the planes. I'll say, or at, at stores, I'll say, 22 years ago, Jesus changed my whole life. And I just feel like I'll tell people about it. Can I give you this? Now, I got to do better. I got more to do. The Lord's working on me. But I'm telling you, that's already, that's already decreased because, man, I can stand in the pulpit and say that to any number. But just saying it one-on-one -on -one to that person on the plane, it just, flesh is flesh, all I know to tell you. But I want Jesus magnified in my life. And so, I, Seth, I got to get small, buddy. And so do you. Let's all stand. Maybe you just ought to come and say, Lord, help me to decrease so you can increase in my life. Some of you boys need to come and pray about your ego. You need to come pray about your pride a little bit. And it's all right to be good at stuff. It's all right to want to do your best. You're supposed to want to do your best at whatever you do. But you should want to do your best so somehow you can give God the glory. He must increase. I must decrease. You gonna sing something or just play? Go ahead.